St. Joseph's Pastoral Region of the Presbyterian Church of Trinidad and Tobago. I am Reverend Annabel Lala Rabkilawan, the recently appointed resident minister to the Pastoral Region. Sharing with me in this morning's worship are elders from each of the congregations that comprises the Pastoral Region. Come, come with me this morning and let us worship God on this Trinity Sunday, let us worship Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of God's glory. Let us come to God in prayer. Let us pray. O God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in whose name we are baptized and into whose fellowship we have been received, we cling in faith to you, the only God. We praise you, dear Father, for having loved us and to send your Son to die for our sins. Holy God, three in one, you are our eternal hope, our companion in life, our liberating power. You have spoken to us through your word made flesh. Now guide us into the truth by the gift of your Holy Spirit, so that we may glorify you forever. O Holy Trinity, your saving love overwhelms us. Keep us as your own, and each day move us to declare, Holy, Holy, Holy is the Lord God Almighty. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, through all eternity. Amen. Father, our sins are ever before us. Please forgive. 
live and grant us sound hearts and minds to be transformed by your Holy Spirit. Help us to be witnesses to you that the world may see our good work and glorify our Father who is in heaven. Through Jesus Christ, the light of the world, we pray. Amen. while I'm away from you. It is so that when I arrive, I will not have to deal harshly with you in using the authority that the Lord has given me. Authority to build you up, not to tear you down. And now, my friends, goodbye. Strive for perfection. Listen to my appeals. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with the kiss of peace. All of God's people send you their greetings. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our scripture reading is taken from Matthew chapter 28, verses 16 to 20. It is entitled, Jesus Appears to His Disciples. Let us listen to God's word. The eleven disciples went to the hill in Galilee, where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, even though some of them doubted. Jesus drew near and said to them, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Go then to all peoples everywhere and make them my disciples. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teach them to obey everything I have commanded you. And I will be with you always to the end of the age. Here ends the reading, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God for his word. Our Father everlasting, the all creating one, God Almighty. Christ the Son, Jesus our Savior. I believe in God our Father, I believe in Christ the Son, 
I believe in the Holy Spirit. Our God is three in one. I believe in the resurrection that we will rise again. For I believe in the name of Jesus. Our judge and our defender suffered and crucified. Forgiveness is in you. Descended into darkness, you rose in glorious life, forever seated high. I believe in God our Father, I believe in Christ the Son, I believe in the Holy Spirit, our God is three in one. I believe in the resurrection, that we will rise again. For I believe in the name of Jesus. And I believe in you. I believe you rose again. I believe that Jesus Christ is Lord. I believe in you. I believe you rose again. I believe that Jesus Christ is Lord. eternal I believe in the virgin birth I believe in the saints communion and in your holy church I believe in the resurrection when Jesus comes again for I believe in the name of Jesus I believe in God our Father I believe in Christ the Son, I believe in the Holy Spirit, our God is three in one. I believe in the resurrection, that we will rise again, for I believe in the name of Jesus, for I believe in the name Oh, 
follow him and be on his side. Corinthians 13, 14 says, The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. This is referring to the apostolic benediction in theology. If we read the first 10 verses of 2 Corinthians chapter 13, we will never guess that Paul would wind up his letter with more than a routine benediction. This chapter has the tone of a showdown. It sounds like something you would say to children. You all better get to bed right now, you know. I am telling you all this for the last time. Don't make me come up there now, you know. When Paul wrote 2 Corinthians 13, 10 to 40, the believers he wrote to were at odds with him and with each other. They had insulted him, ignored him, ignored all his advice, questioned his apostolic credentials. 2 Corinthians 13, 10 to 14 was Paul's fiery self-defense, which he winds up with a stern warning. He was going to come back to see them, and they were going to get to the bottom of this. If they wanted to back Paul against a wall, he was ready for them to show them his miracles. If they wanted to see the power of the Holy Spirit working in him, he would show them. But they would not like it. It seems a long way from any charges must be sustained. And I will not be lenient. And then he moves from all his stern words and says, Grace, love, and communion be with you all. How does Paul get to this point? After giving stern words to the members of the Corinthian church first, Paul knows that they belong to Christ. Even if they didn't know that, do you not know that Jesus Christ is in you? Verse 5. This is grace, the favor of God, the very presence of God, freely offered, loyally maintained with the virtue of God's character and mediated through Jesus Christ. Grace, says Paul, was what held him up through all the beating, the imprisonment, the disasters, the illness he had experienced in an effort to preach the gospel. Grace was what enabled him to live with the thorn in his flesh and with the realization that God would not answer his prayer to remove the thorn. Grace is free, but not worthless. Grace is ever present, but not uninteresting. The grace of the Lord Jesus could resurrect these troubled believers, making their chaotic community into an icon of the living Jesus. Paul could offer them the grace of the Lord Jesus because he knew that despite their attitude, grace was transforming them. Secondly, Paul cared about those individuals. Even in his anger, even in his 
sense of hurt. He told them in verse 5 and 6, examine yourself to see whether you are holding to your faith. Test yourself. I hope you will find out that we have not faith. If they found themselves estranged from God, then Paul's faith was in question. If they were divided, then Paul's heart was torn. This is love, a commitment. It is more than a feeling. It is a decision to be smack in the lives of life of someone else, even though they don't want you there. Listen to what Paul says a little later in his letter. Here I am, ready to come to you this third time. I will most gladly spend and be spent for you. Paul love here mirrors God's love. Because he will not abandon them. He will not stop trying to do the best he can for them. Thirdly, love does not mean that Paul will be happy with their wrong doings and their wrong way of living. Love means he will not stop trying to move them towards the board. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Love moves Paul to push them to communion, towards a common life and a common purpose. In 2 Corinthians 13, 10 to 14, Paul spends a lot of time explaining himself and as he draws near to the end he feels a little self-consciousness about it and he says have you been thinking all this time that we have been defending ourselves before you the response probably would have been yes yes the reader would respond, everything we do, says Paul, is for the sake of building you up. In the end, Paul cares less about what they think of him than about how they fit together as a community. I fear that there may be Quarreling, jealousy, anger, selfishness, slander, gossip, conceit, and disorder. I fear that when I come again, my God will have to humiliate me, humble me before you, and that I may have to mourn over many who have sinned but haven't repented. Paul prays, may the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. It is a passionate desire for God to recreate them. Paul sees what is happening and he wants them to be recreated by the Holy Spirit. He wants the barriers to be broken down and for them to be united, for them to be shaped as a body of Christ. Paul knows that the Corinthian believers belong to Christ, just as all of us believers belong to Christ. And that God's grace through Christ is always at work as his grace is at work in us. He has committed himself to work 
for the good of his people. Even if the me meaning of pouring of himself is not realizing what he wants, Paul knows that they have seen something of God in him. Even though they condemn him, even though they seem not to be taking him on, Paul knows in his heart that the love of God, they see it in him, in how he loves them. And he hopes with all his heart that they will put aside the things that divide them from each other and from him and become a fellowship, a whole fellowship, a real communion of God's spirit, sharing the kiss of greeting without reservation, without pretense. Isn't that how we know the Trinity in our lives? Not in words, in a creed, but as the goodwill, the sacrificial needs, and the fervent prayer of other believers. How do we know the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? It is what we see of God in each other. God's love. God's grace and and the unity that we share as a people. This is a powerful benediction. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and Almighty God, through your Son and by the power of your Holy Spirit, hear us as we pray for your world and its people. We are a world in desperate need of you. Far too often, people struggle for dominance. Far too often, oppression and abuse results. Far too often, groups of people oppress one another because of ideology, religion, race or culture. Father God, you are the mighty creator. Create in us hearts of empathy that we may resist the world and change where we can the dominance, the oppression and the abuse of the weak of this world. Far too often, people are disregarded and devalued because of poverty, geography or disease. Far too often, compassion and justice is withheld because of sexuality, race, or gender. Far too often, the power of the mighty is used 
to exploit and crush the underprivileged of this world. Son of man, judge, savior, teach us to become love-centered and compassionate so that we may stand up in support of those the world would exclude. Far too often the resources of this world are mismanaged and abused and the world and its creatures are destroyed. Far too often motivation is scarce and creativity is in short supply to address the challenges that we face in the natural world. Far too often economic realities take precedence over sustainability of this world. Holy Spirit, advocate and helper, create an empowered spirit within us which can stand against the monetization of the natural world. Lord God, loving Savior, empowering Spirit, we offer you these prayers because we need you so desperately. Captivate us, call us and fill us that we may be carriers of your eternal life to this world, this world that you love so dearly. Hear us in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen.